What is going on YouTube? Welcome to episode 64 of the USS Enterprise D tutorial. I'm Zero Elite and I just want to thank you very much for tuning in today's episode. If you haven't, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button helping me in supporting the channel. I can't thank you enough for that. Today we have about a 23 minute episode and uh, we're going to be focusing on the primary shuttle bay. And um, without further ado, we're just going to be hopping right into it because we've got about a 23 minute episode. Um, but this is going to be cool because we're going to be pretty much establishing the room that we have to play with on this area. And you'd be surprised if you thought that the shuttle bay, the primary one anyway, wasn't going to get any bigger. You would be 100% wrong because we're actually going to be getting uh, freeing up a lot more room on this. And um, one of the cool things is that um, the shuttle bay, um, well, not necessarily a cool thing, but we're eventually going to be adding in, uh, of course, the turbo lift that we go from this deck up to the bridge and then the lower hull of the ship. Uh, so there's going to be a few things to figure out. We won't be getting into that today, but we are, like I said, going to be freeing up some space. So on this back wall here, we're going to be getting rid of everything but the top row. And don't worry about the sides. I know that um, that was uh, the sides and the outside of uh, the primary shuttle bay was one thing I didn't show in this tutorial because I lost the screen capture or deleted it because um, I couldn't find I was pretty still pretty pissed off about it but um, I went over that with you guys and I showed you all the steps and the dimensions on how to replicate that but the only thing I haven't shown is the walls now don't worry about the walls because even what we're going to be doing today um, we're going to come back and flatten the walls out so basically what I'm getting at is that the the walls themselves is going to be fairly easy to do but uh, we'll get into that, uh, not today, but in one of the future episodes, because uh, we're really going to be trying just to shape this room today. Uh, so you can see, now that we have deleted that wall, uh, we've got a lot more room to play with. So now we need to establish our floor here in the center, because our X access point is one high for what it needs to be, so it's the same height as our shuttle bay. So what we're going to be doing now is on the left and right side, we're going to be building underneath our x-axis point and bringing that out to that oval. And then deleting what's above it. And do the same thing on the right side. Bring that all the way out to the oval. And then get rid of what's above it. This x-axis point is definitely important because it's a guideline to help you on where your floor is going to go, just in case you happen to make a mistake. This is why I have these things here to help me with those uh, small details, just to help you out a little bit. Now this gray oval that's directly above us, that's the half, or not the half slab, but the gray concrete. We're going to be bringing that down to the ground level. Of course, I'm trying to build smarter and not harder, which is why I'm using the uh, current oval that we have above us that we use to build out the bridge. What's this? What's going to be cool about this is that this room is essentially eventually going to become our uh, facade for the cargo uh, turbo lift. And then also it'll have the sh uh, primary shuttle bay control room inside of it, as well as the turbo lift that will bring us into the bridge of the ship, and then also the lower hull as well. But it's definitely important to establish this stuff now because this is going to help us in dictating so much of the sh uh, this area of the ship. Like I just said, it's not just the shuttle bay. You know, it's the cargo, it's the facade for the cargo uh, turbo lift, and it's the uh, area for the turbo lift itself, and then also the uh, shuttle bay control room. So this is why you want to figure this stuff out now rather than later, because otherwise you're making uh, a ton of revisions on your ship. Um, so this is one of the reasons why I build these ships in the way that I do. You know, I take my time with it, basically, and I think about what I'm going to do before I do it. And I promise you, if you start doing it that way, rather uh, if opposed, maybe you rush through it, because um, I could tell you <clears throat> from experience that the more you rush, the more you're likely to make a mistake. And 
that's one of the reasons why anytime I'm not exactly sure what I want to do, I'll step away from it and I'll either go to something else or I'll just stop playing Minecraft for a little bit until I decide what I want to do. Like that's honestly where I'm at right now with my, uh, where I'm at in the build because, um, I was talking about this in yesterday's episode that I want to, uh, work on the, uh, uh, Dixon Hill, uh, uh, scene for uh, my holodeck and I haven't exactly decided on where I'm going to build that and how I'm going to do it so I'm just kind of holding off on that right now and I'll come back to it anyway I do want to talk about what I got going on here basically the wall of our room we have a row of or uh, a oval going around it we're pretty much going to be filling that in bringing that all the way up because this is going to be our wall now, in some areas, we're actually going to be cutting out pockets out of this to pretty much have um, landing bay areas for our shuttlecraft. And if you're curious on what I mean by that, go on my uh, USS Cerritos build and you'll see exactly what I mean um, for the uh, what I did with the uh, shuttle bay area. We're going to do something kind of similar with this where we have... Um, landing bays for the shuttles to actually go into that was probably the one <clears throat> exception that i took with this ship that i think it strays away from the original enterprise d because if you go on youtube and you do a search for uss enterprise d 3d tour you can find them uh in unreal engine it'll be like the first one that pops up and uh, it's a pretty detailed build um that they did on unreal and the shuttle bay, it gives you a ton of <coughs> uh, references to go off of, but the one thing that it doesn't have is, and I noticed this, that the shuttlecraft pretty much don't have uh, parking garages, and that was kind of my contribution to this thing, that I wanted to add in kind of like an area where the ships can go in and park rather than just kind of being out there in the open. You know what I mean? Uh, it just kind of made a little bit more sense to me. And this is kind of like where I talk about that, you know, you can take small exceptions with your ships if it makes sense, but you're, we're still trying to stay true to the build itself. So I took screenshots of the, the shuttle bay and I used that as a reference and in areas that I thought that it needed it, I added to it, but the core of it, it's still there. And that's the important thing. But at the end of the day, you can take liberties with this thing because it's not a real ship and um, you're never going to find a completely accurate 110% filled in USS Enterprise D. There's always going to be variations. There's, uh, I believe it's either five or seven variations in Enterprise D's exterior itself, just from next generation and um, the movie generations itself. There's been five to seven different versions of it. So you can, you can take these liberties and have a little bit of fun is what I'm getting at here. But anyway, getting a little bit what we got going on here, you can see that now I'm filling in the floor and on our wall here or oval, anything inside of that, we're going to be filling that in, in the floor. So now it starts to really give you a good scale of what we have, the room that we have to work with. Like I said, what we haven't done yet is at a, a made room for those uh, parking garages that we're going to make and that's actually going to help to make the room look even bigger and uh, add some scale to it because that's one of the things that you are going to see on this build is that there's going to be some very fairly large rooms on this ship that and that's something that you're just not going to see on any of my other builds and I really I thought that it was necessary because of how big the Enterprise D is it's a huge huge ship and like I'll give you a perfect example like when you see engineering on the show it doesn't look like engineering um well let me rephrase it doesn't look like a room that's suited for like a galaxy class where when you really think about it engineering on the enterprise E is probably twice the size of engineering on the enterprise D and the enterprise E is actually I think it's a little bit shorter than the enterprise or a little yeah, in height, it's a little bit shorter than the Enterprise D, but I think it's a little bit longer. So it's really not a bigger ship, but the room itself was bigger. Now, you could argue like, well, you know, that's budgetary reasons, and that may be true. But what we'll do to get around that is we'll have other decks of engineering that'll be larger. So again, we're staying true to what was in the show, but then we're adding in elements 
to help give it that gravitas and that scale. And that's what you're going to see a lot of on this build. There's going to be a lot of big rooms to really help you feel like, okay, like I'm really on a massive, massive ship. And uh, that's something I'm really looking forward to getting into because really we're just scratching the tip of the iceberg here as far as the interior rooms that we're going to be doing. Because um, like I said, this is going to be a massive tutorial to go through all of this. But I'm up for the challenge. You know, I've actually really been enjoying working on the Enterprise D. It's been a blast so far. Um, I'm glad that I waited to get to this point, though, just to get the building experience to do something like this. But for those of you that maybe don't have that much, much experience, hopefully this tutorial will help you out in giving you ideas on what you can do. Because at the end of the day, I'm not telling anybody to build the exact ship that I have. You know, build whatever you want. But hopefully, maybe if you're not sure what to do on where to, or where to start, then this tutorial will definitely help you out. And also, those of you that want to build something closer to what I have, you can definitely do that too. The point is... Do what you want and have fun doing it. That's pretty much what I've done here. And where I feel like I want to make exceptions and change things, I change it. And I don't even worry about it being canon because as far as I'm concerned, you can get away with stuff like that. You can always get away with it. This is looking awesome. See, I mean, we've got a lot of cleaning up to do. Like with the side walls here, like when we first walk into the shuttle bay, um, we're going to be kind of tweaking them a little bit. And you can see I'm actually, I go off the cut line of the roof where they transition outward. Um, that just doesn't, ha hasn't worked out um, where we're at in t uh, the tutorial. And I end up changing them to be completely flat going all the way down. Um, but again, sometimes you just got to try stuff out to see where you're going to land. We're looking pretty good so far. We're not going to be filling all this in live. I'm doing a lot of this so that you can keep up with me and uh, see exactly what I did. But you can literally see right now we're just doing an outline around that inner oval that we did. The wall is going all the way down. Eventually, we will come in and inside that oval as well, we'll fill all that in also. But everything that we're adding a line on uh, going around here, we're going to be filling all of this in at the same height that it's at. So from the inner oval out to the first outer oval where we built our walls down, all that's going to be filled in. That's going to be considered the flooring area for the shuttle bay. So I'll definitely give you a lot more of a sense of just how much room we have to play with here. Um, talking a little bit about my um, the facade for the uh, cargo uh, turbo lift. Uh, there is a reason I decided to facade that out, and that was because... Um, I would have either had to have changed one or two things. And as far as my planning, I would have either had to have, well, I would have had to have moved my, the mall where I was going to build it. And I would have probably had to have moved the aquarium. Now, the aquarium was, wouldn't be a big deal because on the blueprints for the Enterprise D, the aquarium is actually in the forward section of the ship. But as I started working on the mall, which is in the center, I decided that, well, you know, what would really complement this thing and make it look a lot better was if it had an aquarium in the bottom of it. And that's kind of where I got the idea to do that. And I just kind of merged two ideas together. But the problem with that is now that imposed on the um, build area that I would have used for the turbo lift for uh, the cargo, which really isn't a big deal because we can facade it out and we can always build other areas that are for uh, cargo and nobody would bat an eye at it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Because um, at the end of the day, I just thought it would be a cooler idea to have that um, mall because it's basically it's a giant oval and it's going to be directly underneath the dead center of our um, primary shuttle bay and then above it uh, above the shuttle bay is the bridge but I'm definitely looking forward to showing that off that's like probably like the one area that I'm the most excited to get into um, because I think it's one of the most unique parts about this entire build the next one below that will be the um, engineering and then of course that uh, the Dixon Hill episode that I'm planning on building out and one of the um, uh, holodecks 
but that's just one of the things I'm trying to think of to do with this ship to kind of um, avoid too much repetition because we're kind of getting into an area where, you know, we're build to build. There's certain key things that you're going to always see. Like you're going to see a bridge, you're going to see lounges, you're going to see quarters, you're going to see a brig, you're going to see um, medical bay, you're going to see um, a shuttle bay and transporter room and engineering. So, I mean, how do you keep that fresh and how do you keep adding flavor to it? And that's kind of like we're looking into concept art comes into play for these things. We're looking up the design notes for these shows and what they intended to do. Um, you'd be surprised what you might find. There's so much stuff uh, going from show to show that they developed, but they never got around to doing. Like a perfect example on the NX-01 they had this whole rigging system set up where they pretty much had like this monorail inside the ship that could take you to any point of it and um, for repairs and things like that. But they never got a chance. They they never used it on the show, but they had that level of detail on the NX-01 because that was actually the first ship that they built completely digitally for Star Trek. And they took advantage of it and added on all these bells and whistles. If we ever build the NX-01, we could take advantage of that stuff. And that's what I'm talking about, that the, uh, the concept art, uh, stuff that doesn't make it into the show, that's where you can start to add things in to really start to make your ships feel more unique um, and more original build to build rather than all of them being exactly the same interior-wise, aside from maybe a few layout changes that are minor. Um, that's something you're definitely going to see me doing a lot more here. Now, I do want to talk about this, what we're doing on the sides and the walls. I wouldn't really worry about that too much because, like I was saying, we're going to be flattening that out completely. Um, and that's honestly why I'm not too worried about calling out how wide it is and everything because when we flatten it out, it's going to be based off of the entrance where we're coming in at, and then you'll have your guide for how thick, how wide it's going to be. So... Don't worry about that too much right now. We're going to mess with that a little bit more. And I think we have one more thing that we're going to be doing. Yes, we'll be doing the pinstriping on the floor. And then that'll wrap us up today. Because it's definitely important to get that yellow pinstripe with the white detail. Because we want that uh, detailing for shuttle bay. Because that transitions room to room as you go into the uh, different shuttle bays. Because you want people to remember that, again, you're on the Enterprise D. This is how the shuttle bays look. Now, right here, you can see that I'm getting, well, I started to get rid of the, um, this top row here of the full concrete blocks, and I'm actually adding them back, and that's because I decided that I want that line there to have that transition point. So this way, you kind of feel like you're going, when we first go into the shuttle bay, that okay, like this is maybe like considered like the unloading area or like the initial landing area. Then as you go further back, then that would be considered like more like the parking area or um, I don't necessarily know the word for it, but where you would go to go to the different levels of the ship, the loading areas, I guess. It's actually not the word for it, is that would be a loading area for the shuttlecraft, but loading area to go on the ship itself. There you go. That's what it is, and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, now we're going to be transitioning on to the next part of today's episode, and that's going to be doing the pinstriping, which would be pretty cool. Now we're adding in more of that identity of the shuttle uh, bay area that we're that the ship is going to be known for with those yellow lines that just look so fantastic. This was honestly the one of the main reasons why I uh, ultimately decide to make these walls flat because in the secondary and tertiary shuttle bays, the walls are flat, and I've got nice clean yellow lines in the floor and i actually once it, i put this down it drove me crazy and i don't know why it did i guess it just didn't look clean enough for me um because one thing i'll do too after i throw something down i'll zoom around and i'll just look at it um and what ended up happening here there was a, a lot of steps of me uh zooming in and out of the shuttle uh, bay area and coming back into it and seeing how it looked I just noticed that I hated how these lines looked on the side, how they had the transition point where we're going outward. And that's good. That was the main factor in why I decided to just flatten out the walls. Because if that wasn't a thing, 
I probably would have figured out a way to have them transition inward like I kind of had going on there. But I'm not going to lie, it worked out. It really did because I love how the all, all, all three for that matter, all three shuttle crafts, uh, shuttle bays, they look fantastic. But the primary one looks awesome. Um, and I'm actually very proud of how it came out. So everything happens for a reason, you know, when you're building, sometimes you just kind of got to, you know, roll with the punches as you get them. And those punches will help you fall on things that will help make your build even better than what it was to begin with. Yeah, see, that's looking pretty good. The only thing that it's missing now is that blue line when you first come in. And there's actually a reason why I'm adding this blue line in, just also because the color looks good. But not only that, this blue line is going to be simulating um, kind of like um, a shield array. Because when you have your shuttle bay open and you're in the vacuum of space, you know, I think about things like that. Just for detail purposes. So, of course, none of this stuff is functional, but the doors are open. So you would think that it would have something like that, like a, a blue, uh, a light blue hue to it that you would see. That was kind of the idea behind it anyway. But basically what we're going to do in order to add this in where it's not uh, impeding on our build is that we're taking our yellow or white uh, quartz line here we're moving it back by one so we've gone in we've added, added a row of half slabs behind it and now we're getting rid of that original line right there and everything that we're just taking out now now we're going to replace that with blue so now this way between all three of the shuttlecraft rooms they look as far as their design cues are exactly the same and that's what you want See, that looks fantastic. The only thing that's separating them a little bit is this black or dark gray line here, which that might be even something that I might end up taking out because the other two don't have it. But it doesn't look bad on the primary and the fact that the other two don't have it because enough of the design cues are there that it doesn't really stand out as being different. Now, one thing that we are missing is our white highlight lines, but we'll add that in future episodes. We're looking pretty good. I think that's gonna wrap us up here. Um, we shot through 22 minutes of record sessions, but I don't wanna blow this thing up too much. So I think that's going to wrap us up for today's episode. And I just want to thank everybody again for tuning in. And of course, if you have any questions regarding today's episode or there's any builds that you want to see me do, you're just dropping by to say, hey, be sure to drop a comment below. I definitely love hearing from everybody. And uh, I'm pretty responsive in the comment section. So I'll try to help you out if I can. And uh, of course, don't forget to tune in to my new Minecraft episodes dropping Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for me. I just want to thank you all again. I hope everybody has a happy and safe week, and I'll catch you on the next episode.